<laughs> I, I better not tell him we're not insured for that kind of thing. <laughs> Just a word of thanks to all those who were involved in, in working and making up the novena, helping it to run smoothly. The, uh, there were people who were here putting out chairs before we had got started and posters and banners and uh, getting the information about the place first and then a lot of work that went into the actual thing itself. The ones I feel sorry for most were the ones in the car park because they were out there in the sunshine. <laughs> well, in between the showers, that is. Yeah, again, a lot of work there went on right through the novena. The different people then, orderly, stewards, flower people, uh, sacristan, servers, readers, Eucharistic ministers, singers, organists, uh, people doing, sorting out petitions, thanksgivings, the preachers, priests then from the diocese who came along, bishops uh, for the different masses here, others from different redemptorist communities as well that were here helping. St. John's Ambulance personnel, and uh, I'm told we almost had a baby born in Clannard the other night. So now I'm told also that they're doing very well. It was born shortly after in the hospital. Then I have to say a thanks, too, to our neighbours. Um, do you know there used to be a programme about neighbours from hell? <laughs> uh, we, we like to think we're neighbours from heaven, but I, I'm not too sure about that. Because if you were living nearby... Uh, again, they put up with a lot of extra traffic coming and going, and we know you didn't park across anybody's gate this year. And uh, also the fact that from 7 o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock at night, they get hymns and music and all sort of for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so we are very grateful to the neighbours, I must say, for putting up with us all. Um, now... The church, as you know, again, I have to say a big thanks to yourselves for the, all the contributions that you're making towards their refurbishment. I think we're, we're keeping ahead of the builder, and uh, it's great that way. We're hoping that the church will be open again next March, April time, so that next year's novena should be back in the main church building. If you want to have your diary there, if you want to put it in, next year's novena is to be the 20th of June to the 28th. Now, that's a wee bit later than normal, but that's because the Eucharistic Congress that we were helping prepare for by our themes this year, that's going to be in Dublin next year in June from the 10th to the 17th. So, again, just a great thanks to you. There is the weekly novena. If you're wondering what to do tomorrow or the next day, well, it won't be till next Thursday, of course, the novena. The weekly novena, you'll be glad to come along to that. We'd be glad to have you. But a mighty thanks to one and all of those who were working for the novena and to all of you who came to make the novena. May the Lord bless you during the coming year. Thank you. And thanks to Father Kevin Brown for that fine speech too. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So let us stand now. We sing our final hymn, When Creation Was Begun. And that is on page uh, 29. <coughs> when creation
So good night. <laughs> We're left on our own here. I right, better sing a song or two. <laughs> now, Father Willie's supposed to be looking after things here. Tell me, ma, when I go home, the boys won't leave the girl cut along. They put my hair and stole my coat, and that's all right till I go home. She is handsome, she is pretty, she's the bell, the bell, my city. She's short, one, two, three, did you tell me who is he? Albert Tony says he loves her, all the boys are quite a proud. Round the door, ringing the bell, oh, my true love, are you well? Out she comes, white as snow, rings on her fingers, bells on her toes. Oh, Johnny Marty says she'll die, just as a fellow with a row of wine. Let the wind and the rain and the hail blow high, snow come dropping from the sky. It's as nice as apple pie, she'll get her own lad by and by. When she gets a lad of her own, she won't tell her now when she comes home. As, as they will for Albert Mooney, she loves me. I tell me, ma, when I go home, the boys won't leave the dirt alone. I put my hair, stole my coat, that's all right till I go home. She is handsome, she is pretty, she is the belle of my city. She is short, one, two, three, please, you tell me who is she? <laughs> Brother Willie McGethrick, come up here. <laughs> He's the MC. <laughs> You're doing such a fine job, I think you should continue, really. <laughs> Do you know that Dublin beat go go <laughs> Brandon, you don't mind? Galway? Not all that. You can take it. Yeah. Father Willie's been crowing ever since. <laughs> mention, of the, uh, mention of the dubs reminds me that although the novena is over, the dubs happen to be doing well in both codes this year, Ooh. in the football and the hurling. So I hope, and I presume you'll continue that as an intention in your prayers. <laughs> Did any of you ever hear tell of Jimmy Keaveney? Yes. Oh, that's a very soft yes. <laughs> Jimmy Keaveney, famous Dublin footballer, was born in the streets around Clonard. And he was famous, well, it's a while ago now. I suppose it'd be 20 years ago. And Dublin and Kerry, they often had great games together, great rivalry. One semi-final, I happened to get a ticket for what was the Hogan stand there. I got there early, and I was a bit anxious. I was a bit anxious who would come in beside me. Would it be the Kerry supporters? Would it be the Dublin supporters? You know the way you'd be a bit nervy, wondering who would be beside you. Anyway, as luck had it, I was blessed. A troop, it must have been a family of Dublin supporters. They were decked out in their colours and flags and hats and everything. And they planked themselves down beside me. Jimmy Keaveney scored a beautiful point during the course of the game. He didn't score enough of them. Dublin lost the game. But anyway, <laughs> he scored a great point. And, of course, the place went mad. Well, the Dublin supporters and these ones beside me, they jumped and they shouted and they screamed. And I found myself, this big woman beside me, and I mean big, <laughs> I was enveloped in this huge, big hug. Massive. Because when eventually I came up for air, <laughs> and when I got over my dizzy spell, <laughs> I just one thought in my mind I hope to call they score again. <laughs> Oh, 
I saw a singer of note there, Clement McMonish, of the in the. Did I see Clement wandering around there? John, you fill in there with something. Clement, there he is. I better sing something holy after all those yarns. <laughs> I danced in the morning when the world was begun. I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my friend dance. I dance for the fishermen, I dance for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they would not follow me. I dance for the fishermen, for James and John, and they came with me and the dance went on. Dance, dance, I danced on the Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and the dance goes on. Dance, dance, for every you the Lord of the dance say, and I lead you all. Wherever you may be and I lead you all in the dance cut me down and I left up high. I am the life that will never, never die. I live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance, dance forever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I lead you all forever you may be. And I lead you all in the dance, said he. Dance, dance forever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I lead you all forever you may be, and I lead you all in the dance, said he. <laughs> Unfortunately, some of our preachers are already gone home. That's Father Dennis Luddy and uh, Father Michael Cusick, but we still have one. Oh, hey, come up here. Come on. Not gone at all. <laughs> I'm one of those shy cork people who doesn't put himself forward. We never tell you where we come from. We keep it a secret. Um, I'm going to sing a song, tell a joke and sing a song, and then I'll leave it to the next person. Okay. Okay, so... You know this well. Step we gaily on we go, heel for heel and toe for toe, arm and arm and on we go, all for Mary's wedding. Over hill way up and down, myrtle green and bracken brown, past the shilling through the town, all for Mary's wedding. Step we gaily on we go, and toe for toe, arm and arm and on we go, all for Mary's wedding. Plenty herring, plenty creel, plenty peat fill her creel, plenty body burns as wheel, that's the toes for Mary. Step we gaily on we go. Heel and toe for toe, arm and arm as done we go, out for Mary's wedding. 
cheeks as bright as Rowan's are, brighter far than any star, fairest of them all by far is my darling Mary. Step we gaily and we go, for heel and toe for toe, arm and arm and on we go, all for Mary's wedding. Over hillways up and down, myrtle green and bracken brown, past the shealing through the town, all for the sake of Mary. Step we gaily and we go, and toe for toe, arm and arm and on we go, all for Mary's wedding. Last time, step we gaily and we go. Heel for heel and toe for toe, and we go all for Mary's wedding. Lovely, thank you. A, a little bit like Father Brendan Kane, I have a great passion for the GA and for Gaelic games. And I go to Croke Park in the summer whenever I can avoid religion. You know how it works for a priest. Uh, I kind of hide in the summer Sundays if I can. In 1993, Cork senior footballers, and you know where I come from, were in the All-Ireland final against Derry. Now, you know how it went that day. But anyway, I was down in West Cork doing a mission that weekend. Particularly when I was ordained first, I often didn't get away for the matches. And I was getting more and more jittery on the mission. This was Saturday night before the senior football final. Cork were in the minor final as well. I had no ticket. And the priest in charge of the mission took pity on me. And he said, head away on up to Dublin. You might be lucky. You might get a ticket. I drove through the darkness to Dublin. I arrived about 11 o'clock and I went to the Gresham, to the Burlington. I walked down O'Connell Street. I visited our Redemptress Monastery in Marianella and Rathgar. Everywhere I thought there would be a whiff of a ticket, I tried it. No luck. No luck. Went to bed in Marianella, our house in Dublin, up early, got to Mass, into town, with me red and white, all my colours, you know, uh, to let people know I was a Cork supporter. Tried all the hotels as well, not a smell of a ticket. They were digging up the dead in Derry to bring them to the matches. <laughs> they were emptying the cemeteries in order to get tickets. So here I was, it was the beginning of the all-ticket all matches, and I was at the bottom of Fitzgibbon Street where Mountjoy Square connects to Russell Street and down onto Jones's Road, the back of the, 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 the Hogan stand. And I had no ticket and I had to bury my pride because the minor match was at half one, Cork were playing. And I stood out in the road and faced the traffic coming towards me and I said, Cork man looking for a ticket, genuine supporter looking for a ticket. And I did that and the crowd parted as if I had a communicable disease. <laughs> And every time I said, anyone got a spare ticket, everyone put their hand on their bottom to check that their, <laughs> that their wallet was safe and that I wouldn't go near it. I said, anyone looking for... I was dressed in street clothes. Anyone extra ticket? Anyone got an extra ticket? Bishops passed me by. <laughs> Catholic priests passed me by. You remember the gospel story. They walked by on the other side. Christian brothers passed me by and they all separated and passed me watching me like this. And I was there for two, two and a half hours and I said, genuine Corkman looking for a ticket, real supporter, I'll pay face value only. And I, the more... <laughs> well, you know where I come from, don't you? <laughs> So the more I got desperate, the minor match started, I could hear the crowd inside. I tell you, it was like being locked out. Uh, anyway, it was terrible. So anyone give me a ticket? Anyone got a spare ticket? And whatever about myself with a bit of neck, there was a young fella, much younger than me. I was 34, 35 at the time. There was a fellow about 22. He didn't have the self-confidence I had. I knew he was a Cork supporter. And his way of hoping to get a ticket was to stand in the footpath and look sorry for himself. <laughs> you know, in the hope that a certain level of mir mi misery would produce a ticket. 
Anyone looking for a ticket? Anyone got a spare ticket? I did this for two and a half hours. Clerics, bishops, the whole lot passed me by. And uh, anyone looking for a ticket? About three o'clock came and I was desperate. And the young fella finally plucked up the courage and he walked over to me. And here was me doing my very best, having come from West Cork. And you know the life I do and the work that I do and everything. And he says to me, you haven't a hope of getting a ticket, you know. The feckin' priests of all the tickets. <laughs> On, on, on my iPod upstairs, my favourite song, it was recorded in 1962 by the Mac Peaks, and I treasure it, and I downloaded it a few years ago from iTunes. You all know, oh, the summertime is coming, and let's sing it now, and let's honour the great tradition of music and sport and the true humanity of Belfast people that we honour tonight. Oh, the summertime is coming. And the trees are sweetly blooming And the wild mountain thyme Grows around the blooming heather Will you go, lassie, go? And we'll all go together To pluck wild mountain thyme all around the bloom and heather. I will build my love a bower near yon clear crystal fountain, and on it I will pile all the flowers of the mountain. Will you go, lassie, go yourselves, and we'll all go together to pluck wild mountain thyme all around the bloom and heather. If my true love she were gone, I would surely find another where wild mountain thyme grows around the bloom and heather. Will you go, lassie, go, and again, and we'll all go together. Pluck wild mountain thyme All around the bloom and heather Will you go, lassie, go And the refrain again And we'll all go together To pluck wild mountain thyme All around didn't I tell you Dennis Luddy wouldn't go home if there was a chance of doing a gig like that We've had reference to Galway earlier and reference to the preachers. And there's one of them standing by here, and he'll give us an item, I'd say, if you prevail upon him. He needs encouragement. <laughs> Brendan Kane. Just to let you know that Dennis Luddy stole my song, and he'd be stealing my sermons all week as well. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you one story. That's a very sad story, and I hope you... It is really very sad. It's about a woman passing a cemetery, and she decides to go in and she'll say some, a prayer for her dead relatives and friends. And when she goes in to the cemetery, she hears this terrible crying coming from, from one of the graves. So she follows the sound, 
and here's this other poor creator and she's stretched over a grave and she's crying out most inconsolably, oh, why did you die, oh, why did you die, oh, why did you die? So often... <laughs> I haven't come to the punchline at all, yes. <laughs> so she says to her, you know, she's really very, she said, why did who die? But the other, the other poor creature, she, she's totally inconsolable. <laughs> she just keeps crying out, oh, why did you die? Oh, why did you die? And that goes on for about 10 minutes. And eventually she stops for a breath and the other one gets in again and she says, please, she said, please, she said, why did who die? And eventually she's able to answer, she says, my husband's first wife. (laughs) 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 Oh, It takes a while for that one to... Just one more now. I warn you, though. I'm, I'm going to warn you. This is a really grave story. And it's a, bit, it's a bit earthy as well. And you may have heard it before. You know, the story about the doctor. And there was a fellow living beside him who was always complaining about something being wrong with him. But there'd be nothing wrong with him at all. But the doctor, he was a very, very patient man. And just when he'd be going to bed every night the guy next door would knock and ring his bell and say, doctor, doctor, you know, would you have something for this? Or would you have something for that? But there'd be nothing wrong with him. And that went on for years. And eventually, something did happen to the fellow next door. And he died. Now, I'm warning you, this is a very grave story. <laughs> and it's very earthy. He died anyway. And the doctor got such a shock that he died as well, the same <laughs> The same day. And the two of them, it so happened, the two of them were buried beside one another. (laughs) Again, hold on now, I haven't reached the punchline at all yet. The two of them were buried beside one another, and that night the doctor was just stretched down in the grave and he was having a lovely long rest after his labours. (laughs) <laughs> and the next thing I told you I watched it the next thing there was there was a tap on the clay there was a tap on the clay and the doctor says uh, you know and the, the doctor doctor he says the doctor says what is it what is it it's Paddy from next door he said what's wrong with you what's wrong with you he said doctor he says you wouldn't have anything for worms would you <laughs> You wouldn't have any more of those sad stories, Brendan, would you? <laughs> the sad ones seem to go down best. <laughs> the man that was thanking you all there at the last session, last few sessions, Father Kevin Brown. Let's hear it for Father Kevin. <laughs> I'm happy you're... <laughs> I'm happy you're singing hymns. <laughs> the, um, the, only story, the only story I know is um, there's one about a lady and uh, she sent the husband and the young fella out to the zoo. So anyway, that was grand. And when they came home in the evening, she said to the little fella, well, did you enjoy the zoo? Did you see many animals there? He said, yes, I did, mammy. And she said, which, which animal did you like the best? Well, he said the one that came in at 20 to 1. <laughs> Went the wrong way. <clears throat> you have to help me out here because I'm not go- too good at staying with timing. Don't you worry. <laughs> By a lonely prison wall I heard a young girl call 
Michael, I have taken you away For you stole Trevelyan's corn That the young might see the morn Now a prison ship lies waiting in the bay and right where once we watched the small free birds fly our love was on the wing we had dreams and songs to sing oh it's lonely round the fields of and right by a lonely prison wall I heard a young man calling Nothing matters, Mary, when you're free Against the famine and the crown I rebelled, they cut me down Now you must raise our child with dignity Lord, I the fields of Athen where once we watched the small free birds fly. Our love was on the wing, we had dreams and songs to sing. It's so lonely round the fields. Of Athen Rye By a lonely harbor wall She watched the last star fall in As the prison ship sailed out against the sky Now she lives in hope and praise For her love in Botany Bay it's lonely round the fields of Athen Rye. the fields of Athen Rye, where once we watched the small free birds fly. Oh, baby, watch the free birds fly. Our love was on the wind. We had dreams and songs to sing It's so lonely round the fields of Athen It's so lonely round the fields of Athen Good man, Kevin. I think we could say we especially like the gestures going with it. <laughs> and with that sort of performance, you should go further than Jedward ever went. <laughs> now, just in case you would think that the Redemptress here in Clonard can only do a little singing and tell a few jokes, there's more than two strings to our bow, you know. <laughs> Father Eddie Creamer is a dab hound on the <laughs> tin sandwich, the tin sandwich. Well, good night, and I know you're all uh, enjoying this concert, but also people are watching on the internet, the World Wide Web in uh, Washington, in Wicklow, and Woking, and I uh, hope they'll enjoy it too. So, um, During the past year, we have had uh, different people working for us in Clonard, and we have one volunteer from Germany who's been working since last September in the Redemptorist Youth Mission. And... Um, <laughs> She will be leaving us in a couple of weeks' time to go home and leaving the monastery and this old house. 
And so I'd like to dedicate um, a German song which was uh, adopted by an American singer. The German one was um, Zum Musi den, Musi den, Zum Stedele in Haus. I was working in the Philippines one time and we had a concert like this and one of the priests sang a song and the next morning one of our Filipino priests came over to me and said, what was that song Father Pat was singing last night? Hawaii Five-O, Hawaii Five-O. <laughs> it was something like this. That second last piece, anyone would recognize it. <laughs> that last piece, was that your own composition? <laughs> there has to be a question that occurs to anyone looking from this side of the church. Do you have any homes to go to? <laughs> If the Redemptorists, those of the Clonard Monastery, would gather here, and we'll have, we'll sing the Vivat, which is really, this is a sort of an in-house kind of hymn, really, and we sing it to you this evening, Vivat in Eternum. May you live eternally. 
Because they're obeying me, they don't usually do what I say. <laughs> Clem isn't here yet. He's making his way, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. The basses are arriving. Yeah. <laughs> like the great artist he is. When we're all ready, then he'll come on, you know. Viva <laughs> 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 Thank you all. Good night and God bless you. Thank you. Safe home. <laughs>